Hey guys, and welcome back to another lesson. Today I'd like to show you a cool way to practice the circle of fifths. I'm going to play the exercise, then I'm going to slowly break it down for you, and in the last part I'll explain why I think this is really a good way to practice the circle of fifths. Let's get started. So let's start by breaking down what I've just played. The easiest part is the left hand, and the left hand just plays a bass that starts at C and then moves by perfect fifths downwards. So this is really what creates a circle of fifths. So starting with C, going down a perfect fifth, we get an F. If we go down a perfect fifth again, we get a B flat, but we're not going to keep on going because we don't have enough piano for this, so we're going to play the B flat up here. Going down the perfect fifth, we get an E flat. Another perfect fifth, we get an A flat, but we're going to play it up here. D flat, G flat, B, E, A, D, G, C. So I'm really just playing the circle of fifths. Now, you can make this interesting or just simple, depending on you and how difficult you want to make life for yourself. It's certainly okay to just start by playing the basses. And so on. Or you can play double basses. Or if you want an additional layer of challenge, you can alternate the double bass. And so on. You can even try to find more interesting patterns, for example, maybe going up and down. And so on. It's really up to you, but you have the left hand. It's fairly simple to pick up and make as complicated as you want. I've given you some ideas that you can use. If you're just starting out, you can just hold the bass and that's really fine. And then make it progressively more difficult. What about the right hand? Well, the right hand starts out by playing a chord. It's really an inversion of A minor, although it's well not really an A minor, and I'll explain why in just a little bit. And it's the three notes, E, A, and C. And what it does is it moves it down, moves this pattern down along the C dominant scale or C mixolydian. So for this, you have to figure out or know what the C mixolydian scale looks like. And it looks like this. So it's like a C major scale, but with the seventh note or seventh degree as it's called, just lowered by a semitone. So starting with this, this shape, we move it down on this scale. So each note moves down one note in the C mixolydian scale. The C here moves down to a B flat, the A to a G, and the E to an F to a D. And next the B flat moves down to an A, the G to an F, and the D to a C, and so on. Now, this repeats then in the manner of the circle of fifths. We start out from the same shape as we did initially, but moved down by a perfect fifth. And we again execute the same motion, only now we move it down the F mixolydian scale, because we've moved to the F chord. So it looks like this. So the F mixolydian scale is 
these set of notes, so starting from D minor, well, this shape that looks like a D minor chord, we move it down, one, two, three. So, putting it all together, And now everything is repeated exactly the same, just transposed down two semitones. And again, everything repeats, transposed down two semitones. And again, Again. until you hit C again and everything just starts over you can just jump up and repeat so this is the exercise in a nutshell you can make it a little bit more interesting, maybe if you add a little bit of rhythm in the right hand. Again, really up to you. Don't start out if it's too complicated like that. Uh, but, you know, something like this. And so on and so on. Okay, so you have an exercise for practicing the circle of fifths. Why is this exercise useful? So why not, for example, start out with a simple major triad like a C and then work your way through the circle of fifths. So that would be C major, F major, B flat major, uh, E flat major, A flat major, D flat major, and so on. So something like this. Well, honestly, there's really no reason for you not to do this. It's actually not a pretty good idea, but this exercise is a little different. It's a little different in the sense that you're not really working through chords, but actually through scales. So you're taking a shape initially and you're moving it down the C mixolydian. Then you're taking a shape, the same shape, transposed down the perfect fifth, and you're moving it down the F mixolydian. Then you're doing the same shape, moving it down the B-flat mixolydian. Then down the E-flat mixolydian. And then down the uh, A-flat mixolydian. Now, again, why is this important? Well. The mixolydian scale is at the heart of the circle of fifths. And what you want to do is you want to get yourself accustomed to thinking in terms of motion in these mixolydian scales. For example, let's say that you have a progression, a D major to a G to a C. And let's say that you're doing, uh, let's say something like a blues thing, right? So. And you can see that once you start thinking in terms of these mixolydian scales, you can take these, for example, shapes and move them up and down these scales. just see me do is consists mainly of taking these simple chords and moving them up and down the relevant mixolydian scales. For example, you know, I start from this C dominant 7 and I take this shape 
that starts out the exercise and I move it, I just move it. Right? It's, actually, it's the exact exercise that you've practiced. Now, the next chord, if I'm just doing a, you know, I'm moving from C to an F dominant 7, again, really just playing the circle of fifths. Again, moving this shape up and down the F mixolydian. Then I play a D to a G to a C. Well, again, I'm just moving this shape up and down the relevant D mixolydian. And then the G. And this is just one example, just to play in a blues, where this sort of grasp or understanding of these scales really helps you out. And this, so this exercise not only hones your mastery of the circle of fifths, but it also hones your mastery of these mixolydian scales and gets you used to moving shapes up and down these scales. You, by the way, don't have to use this kind of shape. You can use, you know, anything. You can, you can make your exercises up for yourself. Well, not, for example, why not double each chord going up and down the entire mixolydian scale? So. So now everything is doubled, so you have to go twice the distance. Right? So this challenges you to think in terms of moving shapes up and down the scales. So that's it. That's kind of the philosophy behind this particular exercise. Uh, I hope you, you know, you've learned something interesting, you'll incorporate it in your own playing, and this will help you out grow as a musician. That's it. I'll see you next time.